And we're breaking into programming tonight for this historic moment at Kennedy Space Center in Florida as we take a live look at launch pad 39B. The launch window for the Mega Moon rocket is open. We are T minus one minute and counting from launch. Way 31 has been following every moment leading up to this third launch attempt. But preparations for tonight did not go exactly as planned just a few hours ago. A red crew was deployed to fix a leaking valve on the refill line. This allowed liquid hydrogen to continue flowing into the core stage tank again. And then a problem with an Ethernet switch, Nikel, caused one of NASA's radar sites to lose connection. Crews were able to fix the equipment and get the launch attempt back on track, but the NASA slipped into an indefinite T-10 hold pushing the rockets launch further into that two hour launch window where we stand right now. We are 10 seconds down. Let's listen into NASA Live. Leah Cheshire will take over commentary. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer on board the rocket. It will take over command and control of the rocket. But the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T minus two seconds. ALS, go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The space launch system is now counting down to lift off of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing 15. under the ML. And here we go. 10. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Pairing good, con good control on the roll from teams in Mission Control Houston. All good calls so far. Now 30 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. First milestone will be for the vehicle to pass through max Q in about one minute and nine seconds into launch. This is the greatest period of atmospheric force on the rocket. now traveling 607 miles per hour. You're looking at 8.8 .8 million pounds of maximum thrust. Quiet here in the loops in mission control. The four core stage engines are throttling down ahead of passing through max Q. seconds into the flight, traveling at 1,420 miles per hour. The four core stage engines are back at maximum thrust. The next major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison at about 2 minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. confirmation that the solid rocket boosters have separated these 177 foot boosters. Now the core stage continues to power the flight of Orion, all four RS-25 engines firing, traveling over 3,400 miles per hour, 46 miles downrange. Two minutes and 36 seconds into the flight. Hearing nominal calls here in Mission Control Houston. We've still got four good engines on the core stage. Next up, we'll be looking for the service module fairing to separate. This is three 15 by 15 foot fairing panels, providing structural support, protecting the service module. Those will separate at about three minutes and 11 seconds into flight, and very shortly thereafter will be followed by the launch abort system separation. 
just over three minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 4,060 miles per hour, 83 miles downrange. We just had confirmation that the service module fairing has separated. And that the launch abort system pyros have fired, separating those from Orion as well. For future crew members... We just heard the call for three engine press, meaning if SLS were to lose an engine at this point in the mission, we could still achieve a nominal mission. We would just have an extended main engine cutoff time. However, we still have four good engines, all at maximum thrust right now, powering the first flight of Artemis at 5,200 miles per hour, 148 miles downrange. What an incredible sight. History mm -hmm. unfolding right here in front of us. The Mega Moon We're rocket minutes now and on its way to complete a 25-day mission point. to outer space. Nikhil, so it's hard not to get goosebumps or even get a little emotional watching that unfold. So many people here in North Alabama, a big part of that success. Yeah, Way 31 anchor Dan Schaefer watched this historic moment with us just a few miles away from the launch pad. Dan, we know the Artemis missions aim to land the first woman and person of color back on the moon and tonight a successful step in that direction yeah it was just an incredible sight. i'm still shaking everybody here collective just a cheer rose up through the press corps here gathered uh, just four miles from the launch site and you could literally feel that lift off and um it I'm still shaking a little bit because it went right through the roar of those RS-25 engines, the two solid rocket boosters, the largest ever produced, and that thing went up. Oh my gosh, I'm still trying to catch my breath <laughs> and and grasp what I've just witnessed here. It's been so long in coming, and Nikel, you're right. This was such an important first step and such a long time coming uh, for everybody here at, at NASA and in their, in their private partner contractors. Just an incredible sight to see. Uh, this is, of course, just a test flight. There are literally thousands of sensors aboard that uh, rocket to make sure that everything runs perfectly because they want it to be absolutely the best when they put a crew on there in a couple of years and then a couple of years later finally land that uh, first woman and first person of color on the lunar surface. But what an amazing experience to be here to witness that rocket so close. We talked to NASA engineers who said this will be the loudest rocket ever launched. You had no idea until it actually happened. I can't wait to see the replay of that. But I mean, it literally just the power and the, the thunderous roar just went right through us. Just incredible, Dan. Thanks so much for bringing that to us. Incredible job. Thanks so much for that. Back here at home, now more than 1,000 Alabamians in the Rocket City watch at the U.S. Basin Rocket Center as NASA took the first step in its Artemis program. Way 31, Brittany Harry joins us now from the watch party. Brittany. Still quiet here. Mission Control, Houston. Mission Control, Houston. Mission Control, Houston. Mission Control, And it looks like they are still listening in right now to the takeoff. We're going to see if we can get Brittany up here in just a moment. Do we have Brittany on standby? You know, we while we're waiting for Brittany to get ready, I know that's kind of hard juggling uh, this, all the different happenings there. You could hear it in Dan's voice. You could see just the excitement on his face. And it's hard to think about all the people that are really feeling the exact same way that he felt. We saw it here. You know, we can only imagine what it sounded like for those down in Florida. And, you know, all the blood, sweat, and tears, these last previous attempts. Yeah, <laughs> three times now. Her time's a charm yeah. tonight. Obviously, we watched it it happened uh, early morning or late night, depending on how you look at it. And all, so many people um, here in North Alabama, very, very proud. Um, it's actually interesting to see that crowd very still in Huntsville because I know that they're very excited to be out gathering at the Davidson Yeah, Center. we weren't sure if it was going to happen at all after the right. leak tonight and they were yes. able to fix that. Uh, but so many obstacles kept coming up, yeah. you know, the hurricanes, uh, 
created delays as well, but so we're so thankful tonight that this actually got off uh, without a hitch. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, hearing NASA and them running down the different checklists, too, I think both of us sat here holding our breath at, at different points, waiting for them to say, it's cleared, this has moved, we're moving into this next right. stage, and everyone on pins and needles, and it's so exciting to see that that is successful. Uh, they had the four uh, good engines. We kept hearing them repeat that. They said if they were to lose an engine, if that were the case, that they would still be able to be have a successful mission, but right. they were still at last check working on all four right. uh, good engines. All right, we're going to go to Brittany now at the Space and Rocket Center. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, I'm going to step out of the way actually, but continue talking so you can see the amount of people that are actually behind me now. Very closely still watching, of course, a historic moment happening right before our eyes. Pat here with the Space and Rocket Center. So first of all, you sat here, you watched this with the rest of us. Talk to me about how you're feeling right now. Oh my gosh, so excited. I mean, this is something that so many people in this room have worked literally years on. And so to just see this and share this together with all these people has just been phenomenal. And just the energy, I mean, they kept it up. This crowd has been electric all night. Absolutely. You know, we knew they'd fill in getting closer towards launch, period. Right now we have about, excuse me, talking loud over all this noise. 700, about 700 people here in, under here in this historic hall watching the future space exploration right in front of us. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. This crowd's excited to be here as well. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right. Thanks so much, Brittany. Wait 31 will also bring you a special report on Wednesday afternoon. I guess, depending on how you look at it, later this afternoon, <laughs> it will detail the Artemis missions, Huntsville's role in them, and what it means to be returning to the moon after 50 years. And we hope you'll join us for the next giant leap during tomorrow's 4 o'clock news hour. All right. Have a great night. We'll see you then.